In this video, I'm going to show you how to connectorize bare fiber spools with splice-on connectors so they can be used in the lab like the ones you see here in the rack. Turning them from this into this. Let's get started. The fiber in this case is Corning single mode fiber, almost four and a half kilometers. Now let's open it up and take a closer look. When you receive a fiber spool like this, typically you're going to have a fiber taped on the inside of the spool and a fiber taped on the outside of one of the spool sides. Be very careful handling the spool side with the external fiber strand exposed. Typically, it's best to place the side with the exposed fiber on the top when you're working with it. For each spool, we will be terminating an Optics 3X reusable SC-APC splice-on connector for both ends of the fiber. We prefer to use splice-on connectors for fiber spools instead of pigtails because the splices are better protected inside the splice-on connector instead of exposed on the perimeter of the spool like in some of our pre-terminated spools that we've purchased. So there are three main parts to the splice-on connector kit. The first part is the connector itself. It looks very similar to a typical pigtail. The length is specific, allowing extra length for multiple termination attempts if necessary. Connecting the fiber stub with your actual fiber, in this case our spool, will have, uh, you'll be using the included uh, fiber protection sleeves that come with the kit to do the fusion splice. And then all of that will be covered in a silicon boot that will be sliding along the, the length of the fiber stub, protecting the 900 micron fiber itself, as well as the fusion sleeve. It's a simple solution. If you know how to fusion splice, you can do splice on connectors. In addition to the advantage of having multiple attempts, if you make a mistake while splicing, the thing that I particularly like about these is that they can be used with pretty much any fusion splicer. Many splice on connectors require specific holders for the termination process. It must be compatible with only certain fusion splicers even, but these will work in pretty much any splicer that I've seen. So one of the things to consider when terminating your spool is the fact that because the fiber is completely bare, there is no protection on any of the strand. And in the case of the optics splice on connectors, as I mentioned, because it comes with a 900 micron jacket, essentially, it'd be nice to extend that 900 micron coating along further into the reel, both on the inside as well as along the exterior exposed fiber. So what we're going to do in our case is add some frication tubing to the fiber, which essentially is the same exact type of protection that you see on the fiber stub. So before we start terminating, we're going to add the frication tubing to the ends of both sides of the spool. Now for the frication tubing, I found about two meters per side is manageable. So that's what I recommend. And I'll show you the process of installing that quick. Depending on how the frication tubing is coiled, it can be a little tricky to work with, so make sure you're careful and you don't get any kinks in your, in your tubing. I rec recommend cutting that portion out if it happens. It doesn't have to be precise. You're going to cut some off probably anyways, but do the best you can. All right, so we've got two two-meter frication tube lengths which we're going to install on both ends of our fiber spool. To begin, remove any of the tape holding your fiber down. It's especially important to be careful on the exposed side because there's only so much fiber that's been wrapped around this. So if you damage it and you don't have enough slack to 
perform the full installation, you might be in, you might be in trouble. So pull out just enough to get started. I recommend cutting off the tip of the strand itself because of the tape it may have some uh, some stickiness to it. it may may have some adhesion uh, on it, and you don't want that added friction while trying to fish this through the tube. So let's cut that off and carefully dispose of it. I hope you have a uh, safe disposal unit for your shards. So just pick up one side of your frication tubing, carefully align it with your fiber, and start feeding it in. Be very careful about the amount of pressure that you use to fish the fiber inside the tubing. As you get within the tube, further within the tubing, you're going to notice some more friction and you don't want to force it. It can be helpful to straighten your frication tubing out, such as letting it drape down off of your desk or whatever workspace you're on, and let gravity help with the job. As you can see, I'm just pushing maybe about half an inch in at a time. Watch your fiber strand, make sure it doesn't get tangled with the tube. You also, you also want to watch how much slack you have left remaining. You get close, unwind it about a full rotation, and just keep feeding. Again, be very careful on the pressure and speed using that you use to feed the fiber. If you kink the fiber while feeding it into the tube, the best bet is to cut at the kink and, and start over. So now I'm beginning to feel a little bit of resistance because I'm far along in the tube. And at this point, it's good to start checking your other side to see whether or not the fiber itself has fed through the entire tube. All right, looks like we've made it through. It's all right to have a little bit of the strand. As you can see, the strand has now made it through the entire two meters of the frication tube. We'll cut off most of the exposed part at this point. safely dispose of your shard. Wind the remaining bare fiber back within the slack channel provided in the spool. Make sure the fiber is completely set within the slack coil channel. And then as you start to see the frication tube wrapping, continue. As you see, the tube simply provides additional protection to the bare fiber, makes it a little easier to work with termination. For now, let's just wrap the remaining slack within the coil. I like to use a piece of just normal scotch tape to hold the fiber securely in place while you're handling it. We're going to move on to the inside fiber side. We're going to move on to the other end of the fiber spool to place the frication tubing. Remove the tape. Carefully remove the tape from the fiber end. Carefully unwind at least half a rotation of the fiber itself and then cut and then cut about an inch of the strand. Safely dispose of the shard and prepare it for feeding into the frication tubing just like before. All right, so I ran into a bit of real resistance trying to get through the entire tube. I still haven't made it and you may find this happening to yourself as well. No need to worry about it. As long as you have about half of the tube in there, You've got a decent amount of protection. 
it's definitely better than nothing. So at this stage, what we'll do is we'll try to find where in the tube we left off and cut the empty portion of the tubing off and just go from there. So usually you'll be able to feel once you do this enough times, obviously, uh, a little more rigidity in the tubing, kind of like handling a pigtail, you know, that has the bare fiber in it. Um, so find that spot and then cut it and see if the strand is there. So I'm going to go a couple inches down, still nothing there. And just keep going about an inch or two at a time. Okay. So I'm cutting that. It felt a little bit more rigid. So I think I found the strand. So in this case, I'm just going to use a fiber stripper and see if the strand is inside. And there it is. And there it is. Okay, so we're good to go. We've got frication tubing on both sides. Again, like the exterior, we're going to rewind the fiber, carefully recoiling first the bare portion. I try to keep the fiber along the edge of the, of the spool facing itself if possible. And you'll see from the wrapping of the frication tube when I'm done what I mean. There we go. All right. So we've got frication tubing on the inside as well as the outside. Now we're ready for termination.